Hey everyone, so a lot of people have been asking me about my mechanical tendencies recently and things that I do differently from other players, so I figured I would make a guide on it. Um, so let's talk about it. So the first thing we need to talk about is control group stealing, which most people are familiar with, but I gotta get through this to get to the other stuff, just in case you're not. And so the way I want to do this whole, uh, this whole guide is I want to take a standard setup and I want to create a new profile for it. Um, and so let's call this guide. Cool. And so everything is completely normal here. All the, uh, all the hotkeys are as most people know them, which is going to be a little bit hard for me because I've changed almost every hotkey. So bear with me a little bit. Um, but this is a good starting point. So the first thing we need to change is for control group stealing. We don't want to actually use these. Um, just to visually really show that, I'm going to literally just unbind them all real quick. Unbind this, unbind this, unbind this. Here here, 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 and here. Um, and if the way you're used to setting your control groups is with control one, control two, control three, don't worry, we're just gonna go down here. And you can add this as an alternate key or you can just um, make this the uh, the only key. So you could uh, do it like so. Control, whoops, like control one, control two, control three, etc. cetera. Um, you could also keep this as alt one, alt two, alt three. That's what I do in my... Uh, my normal thing. Um, I use control and alt sometimes, depending on which hotkey exactly it is for. Let's get through this. Six, seven, eight, nine, and zero. Cool. Um, so one other thing we have to do is in the same vein, we want to take away these ones here. Add to control group one all the way to add to control group 10. Just remove these. Um, and it might seem like, hey, you know, as long as I'm using control group stealing when I need to, can't I use the, the original create control groups as well as control group stealing? We actually can't for a later part of this guide um, if we implement a particular part of this. So for now, I recommend that you just do this. Um, and in general, control group stealing all the time is not really a bad thing. It promotes good habits. 99% of the time, it's what you would want to do anyway. You very, very rarely would ever want some. Um... Oops, sorry about that. I did control, control five, shift five. You very, very rarely want uh, units on two different control groups. And usually anytime you do, it's essentially some sort of coping mechanism. It's not actually good. It's just because you're trying to, you know, make things easier on yourself. So I recommend not doing that. Just get rid of these and these. We don't need them, right? Um, Contr uh, create control group one and take away units. That's the control keys. Uh, and then the shift keys are add to control group one and take away units all the way down to zero. Great. That's established. And uh, the main use of this is to rebind units to different control groups. Notice down here, anytime I rebind them to four or five, whatever else, it removes them from every other control group that they were in. Um, and so the way you might use this, practically speaking, is let's say you're in ZVZ and you want to make some banelings. You might morph a few banelings. Boom, boom, boom. And then you would hit uh, control two real quick. Boom, boom. And these banelings are now removed from this hotkey so you can control your links independently and they won't mess with the banelings. Pretty straightforward, right? Um, I recommend that everybody use control group stealing. And to be quite honest, I recommend that everybody use exclusively control group stealing. Uh, yeah, so do that if you haven't already. Okay, now it's time to get into the complicated stuff. Um, this is going to get a little strange, so it's very important that you try to follow me on every step here. Um, ooh, remember that uh, all my hotkeys are a different thing? Even my menus are different, so again, bear with me a little bit. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is what we're working on now is what I call a dump hotkey. Um, which is not a very pretty name, but it's appropriate. The idea is we want to create a hotkey that we can use to exclusively take units away from hot other hotkeys um, without worrying about where we're putting them. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to go to one of our control groups. I'm going to choose 10 because it's the furthest away, right? This is control zero. Almost nobody uses control zero properly, right? Nobody's moving their hand all the way to the right side of the keyboard to actually hit zero and move units around. And if you are, you're probably doing something wrong. Um, and so what we're gonna do here is we're going to set this one a little bit differently. 
you can choose any key combination you want for this. What I use is Alt A, which looks really strange, right? A is a conflict. A is our attack command. A is, uh, for me, it produces queens, it produces swarm hosts. A is a lot of other things. Um, this won't actually create any conflicts if you use A for other things. Just trust me on that for now. It's okay. Um, you can set this however you want, though. I know somebody who sets this uh, apoptosis. He sets this as shift D. Um, a lot of people use alt Q. There's all kinds of different keys you can use. I use alt A. It's nice and easy. You can imagine your uh, your thumb on your left hand hits alt and your index finger hits uh, A. Very clean. Um, and so that's what we're going to set up to start. And then this is going to get a little weird, okay? Select control group 10, the one that corresponds to the one we just set. You can use whatever control group you want, as I said. We're literally just going to remove that. Except we have created a dump hotkey. And the idea here is that sometimes, let's say we just want to put a ling on a tower, right? That's a very simple use for this. We can just click a ling either here or down here. Very quickly hit Alt A and that, that, uh, that ling is removed from the hotkey. It's technically on a different one, but my control groups are unclickable and we didn't assign this. So this isn't actually selectable. For all intents and purposes, this ling is unhotkeyed from everything, right? And there's a few different uses for this. Um, like I said, there's putting a ling on a tower. You also might have an enemy bane ling that you're micing against. You can very quickly alt A. Whoops, uh, alt A. <laughs> I actually hit the wrong key there. Um, boom, boom. And you can just uh, send single lings at bane lings and still move your ling hotkey around, right? Send a bane ling forward. And we even have both these completely separately hotkeyed and that ling doesn't move around with the rest of these, right? So there's another use for your dump hotkey. Um, another use would be sending multiple units to places, right? So perhaps, for example, oh, I gotta go back, get rid of these. Cool. Let's say these lings run past a protoss wall and you run into the natural mineral line and you want to split some lings into the main, right? And let's say all your other hotkeys are in use, right? So what I use is I use one through three as army control groups, but early on, I might put some units on two um, to just be in a different position to defend something to help attack. But eventually I'm going to have infestors on two, maybe vipers on three, or broodlords on three. All those are going to get used up. Um, and if all of your, um, your unit control groups are used up, you can use this dump hotkey to remove units from, um, from your existing control group, right? So if we run past a Protoss wall and we want to go into the natural and then we can split these into the main, we hit Alt A real quick to set them over there. And now we can still control this control group as optimally as possible without messing with the links that went into the main, right? So there's another uh, use is splitting off small groups of units um, when you're harassing multiple locations and you just don't have the hotkeys for all of those groups. And this is the last one. This is going to get very complicated, um, but even more complicated if I try to explain it quickly. So let's try to slow down a little bit but this is the real use of the dump hotkey um let me set up oops that drone has disappeared from this little buggy unit tester let's use the side now go over to options instant build and research cancel this get my old drone back okay cool. Boom, I'm going to create a few hatcheries because this is actually a macro mechanic more than a micro mechanic. And this is the most important part of this entire thing. Um, so basically what happened here is one day, ooh, I don't remember I'm using default hotkeys. <laughs> I'm sort of relearning them on the spot here. Um, so when you make units, what most people do is they make units. Ugh, instant build off. I apologize is they make units and what they would do here is if they want to make two sets of lings out of three larvae, they will go down here and they will control click these eggs and then hit shift one to add them to the control group, right? Um, so if I want to make more lings, I might go down here, make a few lings, control click, shift one. And one day I was doing this just like everybody else does. And I was running my army forward and I made a bunch of units and right around here, um, a storm landed and I had to pull back. So I just very quickly hit shift one and I had to run back. And then I had these awkward little eggs on here. Hmm. That's annoying, right? If we try to make drones or overlords next, they're going to end up on our army hotkey. And we can't just go get rid of those eggs because it's like, you know, which eggs even are these? We can't intentionally make lings out of those eggs. I mean, I guess we could, but 
maybe we don't want to make links, right? We, we want options. Um, the point is, this looks really awkward and clunky. And I thought about it on the spot while I was in the game. And I thought, hey, you know what I can actually do to get rid of that? Let me make that wave of drones that I wanted. So we make nine drones here. And I believe three of those drones are going to be uh, on the, the hotkey of these links. I actually can't check because I need these selected. But what I'm going to do is after I make the drones, hit Alt A. I'm going to throw them on my dump hotkey real quick. Once again, this hotkey is not selectable, right? These drones are essentially unhotkeyed still. However, the three that were on the uh, the main control group of our army because of that earlier mistake are now gone. They're, it's as if it never happened. And this was the method that I used to correct that mistake in the game. And I thought about it for a second. And I thought, hey, you know what? What if we actually just, uh, whoops, what if we just plan to do this every time? So what if I make links and whether something important is going on or not, I just add these larvae to my main, uh, my main army hotkey and I just don't care. And next time I want to make, for example, some overlords and I don't want overlords on this hotkey, just make some overlords and alt A real quick to remove them. The only units on this hotkey now are the links we made kind of neat right and this is where that control group ceiling that we talked about earlier kind of comes in um because let's say for example i want to make some lings okay so we have all these ugly larvae on this hockey now now let's say i want to make some mutas right well let's say i make this many mutas once again we're not even going to have to control click and we're going to add them to um control group two the thing is if we weren't using control group ceiling as our default method when we hit shift two the uh, the mutas would remain on the ling hotkey as well as the muta hotkey, which is ugly, right? If we want to move our lings around, it's going to throw our mutas in directions we don't want. But if we're using um, control group stealing the entire time, notice they did get removed from control group one there. Um, and so once again, these larvae here, they don't cause problems. If we want to make lings, we make lings and we hit shift one and they're removed from the muta hotkey. If we want to make mutas, mutas shift two, they're removed from the ling hotkey. Very nice, right? Very straightforward. And if we ever want to make the, the only two units this applies to are drones and overlords. If we ever want to make drones or overlords, um, we make those drones and we just hit Alt A real quick. We use our dump hotkey to remove them from any, um, to remove those idle larvae from any existing hotkey they may have already been on. I think that covers most of it. I feel like I'm missing one thing. Ah, something very important. So when you're first learning this, um, I recommend to a lot of people that every single time from the moment you start at 12 supply, 12 out of 14, right? Every single time you make drones, you just make a drone, dump hockey, make a drone, dump hockey, make an overlord, dump hockey. Um, every single time. However, once you know what you're doing and you can actively understand where your um, where larvae are hotkeyed, um, when I make these lings, for example, let's say these are the five lings. Let me even just get rid of these and let me cancel these larvae so I can really um, show a hypothetical proper situation here. Great. So let's say it's early game ZVP and I want to make um, three lings to deal with an adept, right? Uh, six lings. That is three larvae worth of things. So I would go here and instead of control clicking, I would add them here, right? We all know this. And then we go back to drones and let's say I'm going to make three drones. Let's just say that's all my money. I'll hit Alt A. The next time I make drones, I actually don't have to use the dump hockey. Drones or overloads for that matter. Because I know all of the larvae are removed from this hockey, right? You essentially only have to use the dump hockey technically when you're swapping, when you're changing gears from army units to uh, drones or overlords that first time. And then if you continue after that to make drones or overlords, you just don't have to worry about it, right? Drones, doesn't matter. Drones, doesn't matter. No dump hockey, no dump hockey. None of this is getting on here, obviously. But if I want to make a few links, and then this is here, the first time I make drones after that, dump hockey real quick. And then overlords don't have to use it again, right? It's only when we're switching gears from army units into drones or overlords that we have to use the dump hockey once. And then if we continue drones or overlords after that, you don't have to use it again until you go back into army units. I hope that makes sense. Um, it's very complicated. You might be thinking, what is the point of this? The point is to remove this very ugly moving of your mouse down here, control clicking this and then adding to control group. The, uh, the, the control clicking is a really ugly, annoying action to do every single time you make units. Um, and there's a few reasons for that, right? One is a comparison I like to use, right? 
Um, something you can do in StarCraft is you can go down here and you can click your larva. You guys actually can't see it on the command card. I apologize, but you can go to the bottom right. Let me actually turn my camera off for this. Let's do it on the spot. You can go down to the bottom right and you can click larva and you can click links, right? And then add them. Um, but you wouldn't be caught dead doing this, right? Every That's like the first thing you learn when you pick up uh, your mouse and keyboard and play StarCraft is you don't use the command card to build anything. And the reason is because you're using your mouse, you're going away from the important area and you're using your mouse to do an action that your keyboard hand could do quicker, cleaner, and keep your important mouse hand that can only do certain actions in the important areas where they can, you know, do what they need to do. And it's the same idea here, right? Why would we be coming down to uh, to uh, to control click eggs when we don't have to, right? When we just don't have to. All keyboard actions. The mouse never had to go down to the uh, the command card down here. Um, so that's the 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 first idea. The first reasoning for doing this is um, we're reassigning a mouse action to a keyboard action, which is just better. Um, everybody basically agrees on this. And the second reason um, that we're doing this is because most of the time, generally speaking, you're going to be playing the game at a point where you're done droning, especially when the important actions are going on. When things are getting intense, there's a lot going on, there's units everywhere, the game is getting more complicated. What I mean is, let's say you've hit your drone count that you're going to have for most of the game. Um, maybe that's 66, maybe it's 75, maybe it's 85, maybe it's 100. Depends on the situation, the matchup, how you play, etc. But let's say you've hit your drone count. And so we're going to build those last few drones, right? This takes us up to 66, for example. Dump hotkey. From here on, until I... And let's say we're at uh, out of 200 supply. From this point on, for the rest of the game, we really don't have to think about this dump hotkey thing or the control clicking of the eggs. Um, because we're only building army units, right? If I'm going to build some lings, they go on here. If I'm going to build some mutas, they go on here. And all of the larva stuff take care of, takes care of itself. Um, let's say I wanted to build like uh, an ultra, for example. Um, let's put that on control group three. Actually, let's wait till we have more larva. Two ultras, for example. Control group three, more lings. And notice there was that empty larva on control group three here. When I hit shift one, it's gone, right? It all takes care of itself. You don't even have to think about it anymore. And then maybe, maybe 10 minutes down the line, we lose enough drones that we decide, hey, you know, I want to make, um, I want to make, let's say four more drones. Uh, kind of a silly number, but based on the larva I have right now. I want to make four more drones once we hit the dump hotkey real quick and that's it the drones have been remade right maybe a couple overlords die we remake those couple overlords dump hotkey back to units don't have to think about it anymore for probably the next several minutes assuming we uh don't lose any uh any more workers right and so for a lot of the game you're not only reassigning a mouse action to a keyboard action you're literally removing both of those actions and you don't have to do either um and that's just nice. One more thing I wanted to talk about was reassigning control groups to be more on the left of the keyboard. For example, one thing I like to do is take these control groups that are really far away. So for example, eight and nine here, we can set these two keys that are on the left side of the keyboard. Q and W are two of the easiest ones to use. I don't believe they overwrite almost any default hotkeys the one exception is queens you won't be able to build queens with your hatchery with q anymore i set it to a it's a very easy thing to reassign so what we can do is i use alt to assign these you can use control but depending on the key you're hitting sometimes it'll be easier to hit alt uh, so i do alt q and alt w for eight and nine i think it might actually be nine and ten for me and maybe this is my dump hotkey but it's irrelevant Two of my hotkeys that are on the uh, the rightmost side of the keyboard, I use Q and W for. And we would quite simply, whoops, uh, these we want to assign to um, Shift Q and whoops, Shift Q and Shift W. And to select them, you also want to go in here and you want to make sure you adjust appropriately. Q, W. Apparently something was bound to W, by the way, when I set that just now it did overwrite some hotkey but it can't be that important if i'm not thinking about it find a way to reassign it i really recommend doing this you need to be able to use as many control groups as possible um and i use these mostly for harassment and uh, harassment defense and so i might have two control groups on q and w and what's really nice is they're right next to each other so you're uh 
your mind associates them together. And I will use these sometimes to harass both the left and the right side of the map at the same time. Um, and then, you know, we can do all of this even while... Let's go ahead and add in, like, Brood Lords and Lurkers and Corruptors. Cool. Ideally, a few. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Great. And this looks really awkward and clunky, right? So we'll Brood Lords on three, this here, this here, and we'd have Lings harassing on both sides. And so I can have one, two, and three for army control groups, right? Burrow these, whoops, uh, burrow these here, here. And we can still have these two little harassment groups going around the map doing things, maybe morphing in banelings and uh, causing troubles, right? Um, I use Q and W quite often to throw sometimes even very large numbers of roaches on to sort of pull people out of position in ZVZ. Um, in ZVZ, it's particularly nice because we very often have like just roaches and maybe some ravagers. So I might have all of this on one control group. Let's get roach speed so this looks a little less silly. <laughs> I might have all of this on one control group. And then maybe I have to defend something over here and defend something over here. And I will use two and three for this. And then I still want to harass. So maybe I do like three roaches up here and three roaches over here. Sorry I'm fumbling so much. It's not my normal control group or my normal hotkey setup. So some of these are still a little bit different. But yeah, we can actually have tons of control groups that we can jump to. Defend this, defend this, attack here, attack here. Move our main control group around, bio, 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 defend here, defend here, attack here, attack here. Q and W are very useful. I recommend that you set them. So the last thing I wanted to talk about is spore crawler forests and spine crawler forests. Um, traditionally, this would be used in late game to build huge walls of spores all around on your creep to deal with things like uh, sky toss, perhaps mass BC, um, things like that. I actually tend to use them more in base trading situations when you're maxed, but you still have a ton of money and you can just sort of static defense as many of your bases as possible to sort of thin out the, uh, the opponent's units. Um, while everything's going on. But regardless of how you use it, let's see how to set it up. Wrong menu key again. Let's uh, let's see. So what you would do here is... By the way, I should explain first. Um, most people, for a spore crawler, you hit B and then you hit A. Spore crawler, cool. And I still have this bound uh, to these exact two same keys even. Um, so I can still do this, but we're going to set an alternate way for when we want to build high amounts of spine crawlers or sport crawlers and so what we're going to do here is we're going to go to the the build key and we're not doing rapid fire by the way some people use rapid fire for this don't it's ugly and it's chaotic just don't this is better um and so you can pick any key you want for this um one of them i like to use is tilled so we're going to set build as an alternate hotkey to tilled um and then let's say sport crawlers here alternate hotkey tilled as well it's important whatever key you use that you use it as on the spore crawlers and on build cool and then all you have to do is select your mineral line of drones and then you just hold tilled and every time you click it will immediately bring up a new spore crawler to lay down and so you can just click 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 and of course uh we can do the exact same thing with spine crawlers as well um so if you wanted to retain, for example, the uh, the build key um, as B and the tilled key as spore crawlers, and you also wanted to assign a new one for spine crawlers as well, you would need to assign a third hotkey um, to to build. And it's actually a little bit complicated on how to do this. It's kind of beyond the scope of this video, but just know that what you need to do is you need to find your hotkeys.txt, a text file. Um, which is buried somewhere in your account folder in StarCraft. Um, you'll be able to find a guide for this with some very easy Googling. But bring up that hotkeys file and just adjust a third hotkey in. Um, for example, for build, I have like nine keys set to build <laughs> for various things, um, which is kind of silly, but that's how I have it set. And you just can't get away with that. There's no way to do that without going into the text file. And know that this isn't considered cheating or exploiting or anything silly either. Um, every single like professional pretty much does this. Um, and it's it's accepted by every tournament ever. It's totally fine. It's part of the game. A lot of people do this. Um, so the exact same thing with uh, spine crawlers, for example. One of the keys I like to use is L for this. Sounds a little clunky, but once you get used to it, it's out of the way. You're not going to hit any other keys. It's 
and it's a rare situation that you need to do this to be quite honest right so once again maybe we're base trading and we would just throw down a bunch of uh spine crawlers like so and we could even swap over and hit uh tilt oh no i resigned tilt sorry we actually can't hit tilt um because i didn't go into the the hotkeys file in this case um but yeah these sorts of spine spore forests are really important right um this will help you get them down. Hopefully win those base trades a little better. Uh, get some Spore Forest stuff in late game. And I hope it serves you very well. I think that's pretty much all we're going to talk about. Um, the dump hockey is the newest part of this. This is the thing that I don't think there's any other guide in the world for. Because I don't think anybody else really knows about it. I think it's about half a dozen people ever use this hotkey uh, this dump hotkey method for their macro mechanics um and yeah it's something i just came up with the idea of uh several years ago i just never got around to talking about so i hope it helps some people out hey there i figured i'd include a picture of my keyboard and kind of explain uh what's going on here too as a little bonus thing because it's still kind of in the same vein as you know mechanics and hotkeys and this sort of stuff um, so notice how many keys are missing. Obviously, that's the first thing that stands out. Um, when non-StarCraft players see my keyboard, they figure I've just had this for about 35 years, which is older than I am, uh, and that I just refuse to get a new one, and I've lost a dozen or two dozen keys, which is a hilarious prospect. Um, but of course, these are all pulled out, uh, very intentionally to help with sort of finding fingering around the keyboard without looking down. Um... Tilde I removed just because I want to be able to feel out the very left of most uh, control group without having to think about it or look down on the keyboard. Six and eight I removed because I found using keys to the right of five was just a little clunky and I would find myself missing quite often uh, using control groups past five. So what I decided to do was to remove six and eight and this allows me to do a couple things. For one, seven is nice and easy to find now. I never wish seven. 7 is what I use to put overlords on, overlords that are out on the map. So when a Void Ray or a Viking or Mutas come out, I can very quickly pull all my overlords back home. Um, this is actually an idea I learned from TLO several years ago, so props to Dario for this. Um, I use my thumb to hit the right alt key, and I use my middle or index finger, usually my middle finger I believe, to hit 7. I use 9 and 0 for Nidus networks. Uh, I use I, O, and P to summon Nidus Worms. So when I'm sort of going around with a couple speed overseers, for example, and trying to lay down Nidus Worms, I can use my middle finger. You can sort of picture this or uh, put your hands on your own keyboard. I use my middle finger on nine or zero and my index finger on I, O, or P. Usually O or P actually from the looks of it. And I can very quickly just tap, tap, don't have to look, lay down Nidus Worms, and it's very far out of the way of my more relevant hotkeys, right? It's on the right side of the keyboard. If we go back to the left side of the keyboard, uh, you'll see I have caps lock removed. This helps me find all of the keys around. It helps me find tab, A, and shift very easily without uh, fumbling around at all. I've removed the windows key between alt and control in the bottom left. I use both control and alt for various situations. Back on the right side of the keyboard, I've removed the keys to the right of P, L, and period, which looks a little awkward. But it's very nice because I actually use P for some hotkeys, I use L for some hotkeys, and I use period for some hotkeys. And the only reason I'm able to even hit keys that far on the right side of the keyboard without kind of whiffing occasionally is because I have those missing keys as proper fingering. Looking more to the top right side of the keyboard again, I've removed F9, F10, and F12. This is very interesting because we all know the, uh, the beautiful combination of F10N to leave the game. For me, it's actually F11N. Um, and this reason is because I removed F9, F11, and F12 at first to, to do just that, to be able to like quickly and easily surrender without fumbling around at all. But what I found is that outside of StarCraft, I use F11 more than F10 because F11 full screens, uh, programs, which is very useful in day-to-day -day life. Uh, so I decided why not just reassign the key to F11 and then I can use F11N in StarCraft and F11 outside very comfortably. To the right of that, we have pause. Um, I've simply just removed the other two keys, which I believe are print screen and scroll lock, which are keys that are really irrelevant in today's world, I think. But um, 
yeah, I've just removed those. So if I need to pause the game, very easy. I never miss that. Below that, we have delete and end. These ones are interesting. So these six keys in this little formation, um, I don't typically use for anything. Especially, actually today, I literally don't have any of them bound in StarCraft for anything, I don't believe. However, there was a time where I used delete and end to rotate camera left and rotate camera right. For the very rare circumstances where you just couldn't click something. But for reasons unknown, I removed them. And I actually just don't have the screen rotation bound anymore. I don't know why I removed them. I can't remember. Perhaps I'll rebind them. The other three missing keys in the bottom of the keyboard are pretty straightforward. I've told you um, that with the Overlords on Control Group 7 and the Nidus Worms on Control Group 9-0, uh, I used the right alt key. Just removing those keys helps me hit that right alt key without whiffing at all. And that's pretty much everything. I think that uh, covers all the missing keys. It's not necessarily that you should copy every single key I've removed. It's more the concept of you can remove keys to make other keys that are normally way too far away to be accurately hit a little easier to feel out. Um, and this is something I've been doing for over five years. So yeah, that's everything. Thanks again. Take care, guys.